All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm your host of Deep End Dev, Matthew. I don't know what I'm doing, and neither do you, so let's do it together. Today's episode is brought to you by Nobody, and that's why I'm broke. So, let us uh, figure out where the hell we were on Friday when we left off. I think I remember. And it was um, right here. I'm thinking our, our tile visibility was giving us some issues. So let's take a look. i just do a little quick single player here. Uh, I don't think this is going to... Yeah, wait. Let me just load up the game map and just launch straight. Here we go. Yep, okay. That's where we had a problem. We can't. We got our uh, ability to hide. We're not actually deleting these. All we're doing is... Hmm. We can't go through, but I believe we solved the issue of... We get a, a ball to roll down in there. There we go. Yeah. So our objects will fall through that through that space. I don't know why um, our pawn can't get through. Maybe we're wider than the square hole. But we 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 need to um, get it where we can uh, add our visibility back. And we were struggling to figure out why that wasn't working. I have a couple of ideas that I'd like to try. Let's find where we're calling that. It would be in our user interface and gameplay on our tile context menu. I think our issue might be right here I'm wondering if this tile when we're getting the reference when we right click because the remember the tile reference is exposed on spawn so when we right click on our tile we're receiving that reference Well, no, it is correct because we're getting the visibility and we're seeing add and the color green when we right click again. So this is working. So this replicated component, you can see the two little balls right there um, for the replication. When we click the add remove button or remove add button. We're grabbing our reference, we're checking its validity. I believe we're not seeing either of those, so... Yeah, we're good. And we're toggling, we're going through our player controller and reaching our, um, our server. So we go to the player controller, this is triggered, and this is triggered. So it's going through the correct path. And it is going through this correct path once again. So our code is not doing what we want it to do, even though we're getting to it. So. Let's think. Just realized I think my camera got nudged a little bit. I'm gonna turn it oh so slightly. There we go. All right, so our code is here. And we're toggling the visibility.
with a boolean that comes in. We go find our, whoop, that's tile 24, tile 624, what is it? There's tile one. All right, so let's take a look here. We've got tile one right here, let's freeze it, go to our static mesh. Here's our visibility. This is what we should be toggling, right? And look, it toggles off. We can manually do it. Whoa, oh, this collision just re-enabled. What happened there? Let's look at that again. 600, 624, so I'm thinking, yep, there. Okay, so we toggle it off. Query only, no physics collision, visible. If I hit visible, okay, I'll do that one more time. This time, uh, check. okay, so we remove it, query only, no physics collision, I hit visible. I hit add. Now I hit visible. Hmm. This is default. Okay. I did client and two and hit play. Fifty five, whoops. Where are you tile one fifty five? Okay, we got visible and a query only, no physics. Okay, and that's in client negative one. Editor doesn't have those things. So maybe we're we're not there. Okay, whoop, no, stop. Give me as, play as listen server. Wonder if there's a refresh or something. Let's see.
Ah, uh, here we go. Someone else is having back in 2016. I've tried set visibility. It'll hide, but it just won't show again. Collision toggles just fine. Well, ours isn't. And it was never followed up after 2016, so... Hmm. We can toggle the visibility of just like the full object, can't we? Excuse me. Under rendering. Are we on the... So if I turn off the visibility on the static mesh, are we looking at... Okay, so this rendering is probably the static mesh itself, huh? This is an issue. If there's a bug in the engine that doesn't let us... Um... Hmm. Well, the static mesh component is the root component. Okay, so... Dirty only. Render states as dirty. I wonder what I wonder if that's it. Maybe we need to propagate to children. Mm, okay, so maybe it is the dirty, it, the rendered is dirty. Static mesh component, H-I-S-M-C. Uh, here are hierarchical instances, static mesh components. And then there's instanced static mesh components. They're not to be designed, they weren't designed to be altered at runtime. However, this Boolean was added so that if in the event someone needed to alter them at runtime, they would be able to batch render them as dirty instead of per component alterations to improve overall performance. Okay. I don't fully know if that's what's occurring, but perhaps we want to modify this to um, propagate to children, right? Because, um, and also mark the render state as dirty. Hmm.
It's going to be dirty regardless, right? Because we're changing at runtime. So let's go ahead and save, close, compile, and see what happens with our propagate to children if that's going to fix our issue. We may just um, I don't know. Uh, we, maybe we'll just try and have this uh, run. We have it as a net multicast. Maybe we'll try this as, just in the blueprints and see um, if it works there. So let's see. Where's our excuse me. Blueprint, gameplay, here's our toggle. Let's play. Load the right level. Just one. Okay, well, let's try. Set visibility, the new visibility. Are we nodding that before it goes in? We're not. Okay, so the visibility coming in is the its vis current visibility. So if it is... If it's false and it's hidden, oh, this might only work in one direction based on the logic that I've given it. Um, if it's not visible, this is false. False comes in, it's going to always stay false. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm nodding it. I'm nodding it right here. It's false, it's not hidden, so we want it to become true, right? And if it is visible, true becomes false, and that's why it's disappearing. Okay, so we're gonna um, we're gonna do that, but we'll do it this. Way. So set visibility to the opposite of its current. What's coming in? Propagate children, and then set physics. Uh, set collision enabled. Select based on that um, based on the original so if it comes in as a false uh, and it's not visible then we want to flip it back to that and if it's true we want to just flip it back to that alright we're skipping the C++ code entirely now Interesting. Okay. Let's go back to just standalone. Okay, so it's still not working in blueprints either, the exact same code that we were doing.
Now let's make sure that we have an actual static mesh, so let's get a name. Static mesh cube. Static mesh cube. Okay. It's still there. So it's working. Hmm. Okay, so we don't need to... Let's go back to doing this, because we know it's the same result. Hmm. Where's our player controller? Here's where we're hiding. Okay, how about, how about we print this too? True, 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 interesting. Um, let's not fire that off. That, uh, that's probably the problem, so true. Now let's fire it off. It's true. Still true, okay. All right, we've found the problem. For some reason, our reference here Oh wait. Okay, let's um let's clear our reference. It may be holding an old reference. Um, and now let's see, in our player controller, when we create the context menu, the object that, yeah, we should be setting it, right? Okay, let's try now.
let's print the uh, the variable here when we create the context menu. True, true, false. Okay. Well, that's good. It knows false there. So, what's happening? Why is false becoming true? It's a true, true, false, true, false, true. Let's do this first. True, false, true. Okay. We're getting passed by reference. We're getting, it's somehow flipping. It's flipping by the time we get to the server. Why? That's also passed by reference. True, true, false, true. And we took, yeah, we turned it off there. So it's coming in as a, as a true right here. Uh, wait. Right here. What about right here? Let's print. Let's print it right here before it gets goes to the server. True. True, true goes in. Becomes a false. It's false. False goes in. Well, that's bizarre. That's just strange. Time to hit the Google. UE4, um, server RPC bool becomes true. Um, Boolean pass by reference becomes true. Uh, let's see. Bool input server event becomes true. Okay, I just, I'm gonna not fire anything else at the moment. We're just going to print here on the player controller and we're going to print here
so we can see true 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 oh i guess we do need to um go over to here so we'll do another another print here as it comes in and then it's going to toggle okay we should see true 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 false true true so on the server For some reason, when we go up, I'm just baffled. What is doesn't make sense to me. It just hmm. Well, how about you know what? We'll just uh, we'll we'll bypass that entirely. All right. Well, there you go. I'm still completely confused why um, yeah it's working and I think yep okay so I, I don't understand why um, what's happening here of why this boolean gets flipped we're passing by reference and as far as i can tell i mean this is just taking in what goes in and there's no no flipping is occurring so that's very strange to me but apparently we don't need to even pass our boolean in so we'll just get rid of it refresh Toggle hide here. We'll go ahead and get rid of it. Refresh. We're all happy. And we get the visibility at the very last moment before we replicate to all off the server. So that, that does that. So if we go ahead and let's return to our main menu. Play as two standalone, standalone games, and let's go ahead and test this. Flipping things around here, so Dax is up there now. Cisco's down here. We're going to re revoke Cisco's uh, Dungeon Master permissions. Um, okay. Yep, that replicates just fine. We don't have permission to move it or do anything, but give him now permission. There we go. I think we should let's spend some time improving improving our movement. What do you say? Let's look at what's happening between client and the server on the moving of the pawn and see if we can't um make that smoother. This is 
is very, uh, yeah. Yeah, see that? That just felt nasty. Something, something gets a little hiccup there. If we lock it, we can't move it. Server side, it's all good. But to the client, things feel rough. Okay, so we're good there. Okay, let's visit what we're doing when we are moving. That. So moving, moving our tokens. This is spawning. This is moving. Okay. Token movement occurs on the event tick. That might be required in order to, well, So we get the hit result, then we make sure a tile is visible. Maybe we want to do this math. Server. Um, Maybe we just send in our hit actor, just uh, raw into a, uh, a function. So we're calling client side, we're doing it client side first. Let's not replicate that function actually and see real fast. actually feels better. There may have been an issue with um, rotation feels kind of funky. Ooh, that's interesting. 
Okay. Yeah, let's just keep working on figuring out what we're what we're making, what we're doing wrong here, and just clean this up. Let's keep let's keep on movement, and then we'll um, we'll look back into rotation. This isn't even a network call yet. This, um, let's pass in the, uh, um, target actor. I want that passed by reference now. Target actor is just an actor. Passed by reference as well. Um, I want to this target actor to come in and I want to do this stuff get actor bounds yeah I want to do that I think target tile is gonna go away think totally okay so let's move out a little bit get some room let's move our server call for now stop this for the moment So our target comes in. Make a vector. We're just adding another 100 here after we make this vector to the Z. So we're adding that and we're adding 100. Right. Let's avoid that for now because this is also the final movement. Get actor rotation.
Okay. So now we're, we're doing all that here. We'll get rid of our location and transform. So we're only passing two references in, our token to move and the target actor. Refresh. Our hit actor, boom. So let's just go straight to here. Refresh. We want to promote this to a variable. This is our target actor. And this we're doing here. Or let's see. We do it right here. pass it in and then over here we do a validated get also just to make sure we're not going to use that anymore pass it in it's valid And we'll also clear our target actor as well. Okay. Uh, where were we? We're here. So now we want to, once we've, this is our local side. This is client. So as authority, we need to, if we are remote, we come down here and we do it remote first. And then, but if we're just authority, we go straight to server. But after we're done doing it local, if we're remote, we want to do it server as well. And server, similarly, I think is going to do the same thing. So I want to pass by reference that again. This is going to be our target actor, which is just an actor. Disconnect that. We also are going to need to fix this one too. So this is where, okay. Pass by reference. This is our target actor. Just an actor. Whoop, actor. There we go. Get rid of that. Get rid of our location and the transform actor. I'm going to copy that. That. Just move this, make some room real quick. Target actor, we get its bounds, make a vector. We then also get its rotation and set its rotation zero X and Y. We want its pitch and its roll, its roll and its pitch reset, but its yaw stays the same. Okay, so there's our new movement on the server. Refresh that. Refresh. Target actor comes in past. We don't need those. Refresh. The target actor gets passed. Token of move gets passed. Okay. Well, let's play with it and see what happens. 
we took out the height so expect to see no lift Okay, <laughs> it works, we're clipping, which is kind of fun. I wonder if it's cause, um, so we have it replicating movement, but we're also manually I wonder, uh, let's save all this close and go to our token. Where's our begin play? Here we go. Set replicate movement. Let's, let's turn that off for now. Um, We might turn it back on, but something may be getting a little confused when we're replicating movement while also calling a deliberate set actor location. I'm just, let's see if something is, uh, is conflicting there. Um, so let's go to both clients. I don't know if this will work, but if we're on default map and we're both clients. So the standalone game is probably going to... Oh, okay. I don't know if this is mimicking network or not, but we'll see. Feels like it's mimicking network. Ah, without the uh, replicate movement. No, we need that. Okay. Save. Quit. Give me my replicate movement back. Okay, now they're talking to each other once again. Let's go ahead and dive into um, fixing the height issue. We want it to lift, so let's move these things back down. Move this back over here. in here okay so in our player controller we're no longer doing this this side and we're no longer doing this So I think we can kill our target tile. We're not using it anymore. 
Okay, so when we are um, when we're doing our initial pickup and hovering, we're one hundred. Um, One hundred units up is what we were doing. So I think what we want to do is maybe This is where hopefully a bull works. Um, be uh, bolding. So maybe we won't pass by reference. Um, okay, so be holding comes in, and uh, we're gonna do an add vector select based on it if true we add 100 if false we add 50 because we're dropping it and then we'll go in there uh, same thing over here we're going to add that be holding here we want the holding just pass it straight through pass it straight through and again add a vector select Through 100, false 50, Need more space once again, okay. Um, I want to just do this map as a standalone, just me, no, client, actually, in the selected viewport. <laughs> that is so funky. I wonder, hold on. I've got this um, enable at a network emulation. I'm going to turn that off. wonder if it's the netcode emulation that's making it wonky like that. Is that how it's going to feel on a... Yeah, it's totally emulating a network code. So even our rotation feels better. So... Oh, that's interesting. What's going on there?
Oh, rotation doesn't uh, replicate. So we actually will want to pass a an the um, token rotation to the server. There you go. Okay. So maybe the maybe the network emulation is just I feel like the internet's not that bad these days. <laughs> but you know, I'm on gigabit, so what do I know? That feels better. Uh, let's go away so we can save. We'll start from the main menu again. Those two standalones and connect. Turn off the permissions on DAX again. The lifting's not working. That's interesting. I'll have to look into that. DAX, you now have control. a wall. Well, that feels good. So, I mean, that all feels pretty, pretty dang good. I just have to test in a real situation over the internet at some point and see if the net emulation was, was accurate in how it felt, or if this, um, network emulation is, uh, average internet conditions. I'm going to have to read more about making sure if that network emulation is accurate. It just doesn't feel right to me. Okay. Um. Well, 
let's uh okay let's organize a little bit here we aren't even doing update player info from server no we're not doing that That spawns a token. This is movement. Physics. Locking tokens. Setting tokens. Toggle permissions, destroy a token, toggle hide tile, toggle hide tile. Okay. Um, I think we need to work on our main menu. where um, we need to be able to set player uh, our um, our data before we go into a game. So this is where saving and loading is going to come back into play. Um, I'm going to open Another game of mine which has some checks on this already. And let's see. Right, okay, so on the construct, we need to do a save game check. Does save game exist? Um, so these are buttons. We want a custom event called check for save game. Does save game exist of our player save? We need to make an options menu. I don't believe we have an options menu. No. We skipped that, so let's quickly make an options menu. WEP um, Yeah, we'll just call it options menu. It might have some other stuff someday, but for now it's just going to have um, our player information. So we're going to make a border that is um, centered but it's going to size the content and its brush color will be black uh, within this we'll have a vertical that's not where I want to search that a vertical box this vertical box 
We'll then have text. This text will say player uh, player info. Uh, that's going to be larger, so we'll bump that up to like I don't know, 64. We'll then have another text. Player name. We'll center it. This should be centered too. Underneath the player name, we'll have a text box. This is the player name entry, which will give a little hint of enter a name. Go with the Roboto font again, and we'll bump that up to uh, 24. Player name, let's go 32. I would like a spacer too, I think, beneath player info, just to give us some breathing room. Something like that, 32. Keep it nice. Um, I think that's all we need. Let's go ahead and get our, our usual horizontal box. Also, I'm going to give this some padding. There we go. Um, does that have a... Yeah, there we go. That's not what I want. I want that one. Sometimes this crashes everything, so let's do a save before we throw this in here. We're good. It's happy. Okay. Uh, let's do another spacer. go all right so there's our options menu right now it's just our player name at some point maybe we'll have an avatar we'll get rid of the color maybe or um, we'll have the color along with the avatar so uh, we want to add this to our main menu I believe is that how we handle that Yes, the main menu has our options menu. Toss that on there. I want to be stretch. Zero, zero. Size to content. No offsets. It is hidden by default, however. Name that our options menu. Um. We don't think we need anything here. Our back button, when clicked, just sets visibility of ourselves to hidden. And uh, where's our back button? Oh, right. That's cool. Okay, so we're actually going to bind things. So on the main menu, when we go over here, first, let's finish our check save game. If we do not have a save, we want to um, this border. This is the, the main menu border. And it is a variable. We will organize. We're going to set this visibility to hidden. And our options menu set visibility to visible. Our options menu will also have a save game check. Um, check for save game. 
So that's what we need there for now. However, on our construct, we need a little bit more. So we're going to go to a sequence when we construct our main menu. First, we will do our check for save game. Next, our options menu, get the back button, and we will find an event to on clicked. I just learned that you can do this and it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna create an event. Hide options menu. Where we will options menu set visibility to hidden and set the main menu border back to visible. And then uh, similarly, we will bind also the accept button. And bind an event to on clicked as well. This will be This is where we're going to go to our uh, game blueprints. Do we have our save stuff? How did we handle that? We just haven't been using it, but that information should be around here. Here we go, save player info. So we are still taking in that, checking, creating a save game. Um, if we don't have a save game, make it pass the new player info in save it and save to slot our default save slot is player save okay so we want to have when we hit accept the player name that we enter into our entry box needs to be um, put into a player info struct that we've made and then we want to send that to the game instance and save it so do we want to do that event here. Let's do it in the options menu. And it's going to be on clicked. Get the game instance. Pass to BP game instance because we are no longer doing those interface calls after a hefty rework of removing that. We're back to just our plain old casting. Save player info. However, we can still use those nice calls anyway. They are helpful. However, I want to get rid of that so that we aren't tempted to use it. We are going to uh, create a player, make a, wait. Ah, uh, yes. We still need our construct. Because um, let's say you already have a player info. Um, you're going to want to save over the old one. So we're doing um, checking again, player save.
on construct. We're gonna get, just promote this to a variable. Get an instance. References. That's under widgets. Um, if true, we are going to load the player info. Let's move our accept button for now. When we load player info, getting our game instance, load player info interface call. Or is it the message? What's the difference? Let's find out. Because that's a good question. Interface call versus message. Interface message calls function to any type of object and hope it has the interface and their functions implemented. And if it has it, call it. Interface call is a call function directly from an interface. You need to cast object to interface because the object won't be accepted. So a message is tolerant, the second is not. So, let's stop doing this. This was in 2015, though. Let me see if there's... Here's a 2019 Reddit post. Messages are for when you aren't the actor and you don't have a direct object reference. Okay. We have a... Let's see. Okay, so we have a direct object reference, so we can do the interface call. Like this. That's good to know. So we could actually go through where we've done messages and clean things up where we have a, we have the reference right here. So we, can, we don't need to go through a message um, to check. So direct interface call, we're loading the player info. We are going to set that as a promote it to a variable layer info. We'll put this into a config folder. Um, and then when we load it, make another custom event called setup layer info. where we will get the player info, break it, and we will set our, set the text, if we already have one, to our current player name. Um, This button is enabled. We're going to bind it 
to uh, we're gonna break our player info is empty. So it's only enabled if uh, if our text is not empty. So get accept button is enabled. So to return to where we were, if we do have a save game, we do that load player info event right here. If not, we go to game instance, save interface call, save player info. And we toss that in so that we're creating one. It's going to be blank because we're just making sending in a blank one, but we're making a save game object so that we have something to save to. And now when we click the accept button, we're getting get the text, set members in our player info, we're setting the name, and then we're passing the struct out and saving it. Um, get text from entry box and set it as player name, then Save that info, send that info to the game instance. So on construct, we're not doing anything. It's on main menu that, right. Uh, what are we doing when we hit menu? Oh yeah, we're hiding the event again, and we're just hiding the options menu again, along with what we did in the options menu for accept. Um, okay, yeah, so when we check for a save game and we come in, um, if we don't have one, we're opening the options menu, and then the options menu needs to check for a save game as well immediately once it's opened so that it can load up previous stuff. So if the player already has a save game with a player info struct, um, if the player doesn't already have a save game with a player info struct, open the options menu, set one up. Load old player info struct. Create new save game object and a fresh player info struct.
Are we doing the setup player info? Did we forget to call that? Yeah. So when we load it, we need to call setup player info. That's ugly. Let's just make them stack like this again. Okay, that's all I think we need there. Um, let's double check our main menu. When, oh, we need to actually add an options button. So we'll do it below that. This is the options button and it will be purplish. Okay. So when we click this, let's put it over in buttons. We uh, remove from parent. Wait. What am I doing? No, we're not going to do that. That's old. I'm not going to remove from parent. We're right here. We're just going to um, set visibility of the main menu border to hidden. And the options menu will set the visibility to visible. There. Yeah, this show options menu, show find. Are we using those? These are separate, but our main menu is hosting our options menu within it. So we don't want to remove from parent. Oop. Might be mad. Seems mad. What did we do? Okay. Check for save game is the first thing. Does it exist? Uh, one ch uh, second. I'm going to actually make sure that we don't have any save games. And if we do, I'll delete them. We do, I'm gonna delete it. Save and only one. And we are still having an issue, okay.
make it focusable. Uh, let's play in the selected viewport. Ah, what's going on here? I see. Pass to BP game instance. We still had one final issue. Show the main menu. Interface call. And our error window has got old stuff as well. Show the uh, cast to BP game instance. And we are, we want to destroy session call. We want the interface call also, not the message anymore. Let's also switch this to Want to show main menu interface call and then remove parent. Okay. Boom. There we go. Perfect. It sees we don't have a save info, uh, save game, so it opens up the options menu immediately. We're Cisco. Our accept button is not working. Let's go and fix that. So our options menu, this, the enabled, we have it bound. Aha! That's not what we want. We want this. Get text. Is that empty? There we go. I'm Cisco. Let's host a game. Test. All right. Didn't work. We need to... Oh, we don't have the loading. We, we disabled that. So, we know this is working. Oh. Make sure that that's connected. We'll print here like a good coder should. We are in the WBP error window on clicked step button failed to cast BP game instance. And that's all we should have here. This let's do that. That looks better. Yeah, center it. Okay, our main menu should be good. Let's also print here. We're in the um, main menu level. Begin play. Uh, failed to cast EP game instance. Close. Our BP game instance, our show options menu, we are not going to use, so let's get rid of that. All right. Good. Where else are, yeah, let's, let's change a couple of these. Show the main menu interface call. Sometimes these just don't like to line up. There we go. Where else? Launch lobby. Launch lobby interface call. Yeah. We're just going to... We'll, we'll do that anytime we come across those and switch them from messages to interface call. Because when we have just a direct thing like that, 
when we know what our ref that a reference for sure like this can't be anything else if it were if we weren't sure of what kind of an object we had and we were testing that's where we would send a message and that they would test but right here it has to be the game our type of game instance if it isn't our whole thing just falls apart so we're going to show host an interface call find game interface call Okay, so let's um, find our lobby game mode and our lobby player controller. Here we go, here's our load player info. So, Does our server, our lobby player controller still have, doesn't, what about our parent? It doesn't. So what's going on right here? Oh, the player state. That's what we're grab grabbing. Okay. Um, so This is the initial setup right here. Where's our load? This is our load player info is on our player controller. It, maybe that needs to be on player state. Here's our player state. Let's create a custom event called load player info where we get the game instance passed to a BP game instance. Cast fails, we print a string saying we are in the BP player state on load player info failed cast BP instance we're going to load player info interface call and we will set our player info to that player info if if we have a success We are already doing it here, but um, we just need to do this actually in the play. The, there's no point in doing this here. So let's go back over here, get rid of that. Um, our initial setup. So we're here's our loop, remember? This is where once we finally have our player state, we'll load our player info. That's not what we want. We want to uh, cast to our BP player state and then load our player info. Right? Do we want to do that? Check our game instance of what we're actually doing when we call load player info. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Okay, so this is safe to safe to do because it's going to check.
is on the initial setup. Failed to cast to EP. Once we've tried to load the player info, then we'll set up the lobby menu widget. And the lobby menu widget. We want to get rid of that. Let's go ahead and just hide it for now. Aha, perfect. I got it. And we are hiding that. However, our, our server name's wrong. Let's look into that. server name text. So what are we doing wrong there? We host a game. Server name comes into launch lobby. It gets set. We show the loading screen. I'm curious. I don't think that should change anything. No.
what's happening here. If that's getting getting the server name properly. Yep. Okay. So that's getting it. Expose on spawn. So where we are making the UI. Yeah, right here. Initial setup. Let's pass that text by reference and by reference. Still losing it. Our save game doesn't have that information in, is it? Does it? No. So that shouldn't matter. Why are we losing it? Where are we calling this? called by lobby game mode. So it's getting a default. This is not set yet. Um, where is it getting that again? On begin play. Print it. Default server. Interesting. Okay. So this is getting called before the begin play of the game mode. So we need to actually do this as a custom event. Um, 
initialize server info info. So um we need to begin play. We want to initialize server, initialize server info. And then um, this needs to have like, yeah. So we're using that here for start game. Um, let's have another Boolean called server info ready. It's false by default once this goes set it to true and then over here we want to check um, if false uh, delay for 0.2 seconds and then go back into it Let's, no, it can't be a, a function or an event because it'll run parallel. We could make these functions. If it's true, we move forward. If false, we loop in, into that. Let's see if that fixes it. We might get a, an infinite loop if it never gets set. No, nope, we're good. So it waits for that information. You have to do a bunch of those, huh? Okay. Um, I want to make this a function. We can't because it's a delay. Wait for server info. Get um, info. Okay, so we've got that. And here. Wait for player state. Okay. Dismiss that. Let's try a different one. I'm Matt. Host. Different. Matt. Different. Matt. Sweet. We're good. Awesome. It doesn't work with uh, with our local, but uh, it certainly works uh, if we had multiple folders. Um, I think if we were to, let's go ahead and package it. Get rid of the old build. Build it again. Ooh, yay. I got a new motherboard coming upgrade into the x570 chipset so my ram will have a little bit of headroom in terms of memory speed and i will have the foundation set for a uh, an nvme uh, ssd or m2 i don't know is it is, yeah it's solid state but with PCI Express 4.0 speeds. Build successful. Whoops. Okay. 
Let's uh, get those open. I'm going to copy it. Go to my Unreal builds. There's battle grids. That's one. Okay, so copy, paste. And there's two. Okay, so if we launch two of these, they should have their own. Um, their own save folders. However, it launches full screen, which is kind of annoying. So this one will be Cisco except and this one when we launch it, we should see. Yep. Okay. So it knows two different. This is Dax. So now we go over to here and host a game. This is the DS9 game. Two on LAN, hit accept. That will allow access on my private network. There we are. Uh, we go to the other one, we find a game, LAN, and allow access for that one as well. We're there. Whoa. Interesting. Let's leave that game. That was the host one. There's Cisco. Dax should have a save game. Interesting. Yeah, it's right there. I bet it has to do with, um, I'm thinking perhaps it has to do with replication. So let's look at replication. Our player info is replicated here. Load player info. So our, our lobby. There's another one. Let's fix those as I see them. Um, Right here, that's passed by it. create a connected player widget, add player to player list. Where is that? That's getting called probably on our right here. Update server side player info. Player info comes in. I want it, let's make it reference. We're setting. the player state of this player controller to this. So where is this getting called? Right here, we call it.
We're not doing that anymore. Load the player info before we set up the lobby menu widget. Then we set up the lobby menu widget where we do a setup UI. Adding players to player list, add connected player. So on here, Update all connected player lobby widgets. This is where we're getting the player list and adding them. So this information maybe here we need to load player info before proceeding. This isn't going to work until we build it again. So let me delete the old builds. Do I have it open? I don't. Build this again. Well, that does that. I'm going to grab a drink and do a quick break. So I'll be right back. Okay, that finished building. I'm going to duplicate it again. Gonna launch two of them. Cisco on one. Dax on that one. There's our Deep Space Nine game. Let's get Dax in there. OK, 
Okay, we're in it. But we're not getting added. Okay. Interesting. That's fascinating. Oh, there's two. So it definitely knows it. It's just not creating our... Um... Ah, our color is not getting updated either. Okay. So we've broken some things. We need to fix now. I'll delete those builds. Let's return back to our updates. So when we load player info, we're going into our game instance. We're loading a game from slot, checking if it's valid. If it's not valid, okay, let's go back. It should still be doing that. Let's go ahead and get rid of it there then. We create a lobby menu widget, add it to viewport, set our input. And that's it. That's, that's all. That's all. We're done with player. We're done at player controller. Nothing else gets called here yet. So we're back over here. Network graph, here we go, okay. When someone logs in, we grab them, we add them to our connected. Oh wait, hold on. Their references, this should be, this should stay updated if this, if the data changes and with, with it, it's pointing to a memory, so shouldn't need to be uh, the array shouldn't need to be updated we wait for server info once we get it we run that okay so then we come back to here we wait a second and then we run this every time somebody comes in with new server side information. Okay, so every time somebody connects, we update everyone. So this this should be loaded because when we go into here, we're loading. We're loading player info. And 
and we're setting it upon into the player state. And player info, we have it that by default currently. This is a replicated variable. So between client and server, this stays the same. Player state is accessible. Okay, so yeah, we're, we do that. We've got it loaded. We come out, come out here to here, grab the, clear it, grab our connected players. Maybe we don't need to be doing that. How about we just go with get game state cast BP uh, or in the lobby. I believe we don't have a lobby game state, but our lobby game base. Aha. Okay. Are we doing anything special here? No. So we should be able to... Well, you know what? We're just gonna make our um, pop our BG game state base. Let's make our BP lobby game state base. Pile and save. I don't think we're we're not doing anything special here. That we do have a config connected players info. So if we go over here and we just close all tabs, open up the C++, this is the parent class of all of them. There's our connected players info. That's probably what we're losing. So this is in our game mode. Hey, Z positive. Doing quite well. Just working some more on um, network code again. Okay, so get our game. Let's put this to our lobby game state base now. Now we get state. Pass to lobby game state. Get players. Get the player array. There we go. Let's check the length of that now. String the lobby game mode base and update all connected player lobby widgets failed to pass BP lobby game state base. All right, so now we're going to use this player array and Ah, uh, that's why. In our player controller, we're doing these things. Is the player state net owned?
Probably can. I think it could. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know the last time you were, uh, in here, but the, uh, so the, I moved a bunch of stuff into a player state because, um, if we look at the network compendium, which is really useful, let me pull that up. This is important and has helped quite a bit. As you can see, player controllers don't know about other player controllers. They exist totally separated from each other. However, they do know about other player states. So if you want to be able to, to know um, information from client to client, you need to be using player states, not player controllers, to be holding that data. So I've moved um, a bunch of the information, such as the player name uh, and the player color, um, and whether they have Game Master permissions and things like that, into player state. Game state and game mode exist on both. Game state holds the player states and knows information about all the player states and the pawns that are connected. Um, so this is more like, these are rules that move from game to game to game and servers. Um, the game state is right now. That's like, um, so the game mode would say how to win and the game state would say how close you are to winning, for example. Um, so I'm trying to move data between modes and controllers into the state area so that there's a better hierarchy of where the data is being um, accessed and it makes more sense of what they're controlling. Because I added in, it, it began with the ability if we were to go to our, if we do two and we just load straight into the default game map. Skip the, uh, the whole lobby sequence for now. And we've got our two, oh, they're not even connected. Whoops, hold on. Maybe clients. The, yes, the, the server knows about more cl player controllers, but clients don't. So only the host would have access to that information. But let's say, in for example, in my game or in my software, Let's say I host a, uh, a game, but one of the clients is the, is the dungeon master. So I want to give the dungeon master, obviously, the control over uh, the game. But the dungeon master is a client. So the dungeon master isn't going to know all the other player controllers. So such, something such as like this, where I have these walls, the walls of the dungeon I want I want to be um, only that I control, but I, uh, if I have if I have a um, a pawn, a token that is a character, I want to be able to say that the other other player, the client, has control over being able to move that. So in this case, we're both dungeon masters. But if I were just a player, now I have control. That's funny. Um, to move the pawn around. 
However, if this guy right here was not a um, was a client, not a host, and I did that, and I'm looking for other player controllers, I wouldn't be able to dynamically populate this list. It is, but I don't want to give ownership. I want to just give permission to move it. So the permission to move the pawn, a token has a, uh, I've given it an array, um, and it populates an array of player states. And it looks for that and it says, are you a player that has permission to control me? Because uh, multiple people need to have access and permission to be able to move the minifigures around on the battle map, um, not just one person. So I don't, I don't want it to be based on ownership. The goal is kind of to try and simulate as much as possible a, uh, a tabletop situation in Dungeons and & Dragons. And usually in that situation, um, depending on your home rules, the, the Dungeon Master can move everything. And a player has uh, the permission to move their minifigure to, uh, for their own movement. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm setting up. Let's see. The issue that I'm having now, however, is if we start on our main menu. Yeah, or the dungeon master can give um, dynamic permissions to the players on what pieces they can and cannot move. So um, if you wanted to, you could give a, a one player permission to move a bunch of tokens, but the other players can't. So. Right now we're improving the interface um, and the network connection for when we go from here. So we are able to set our player name in here and then go in and it grabs it. However, because this is one game, it grabbed the last time that the save was made. And so the save games only work when you build and package the game and then have uh, and you copy and paste, you need two folders. So that's the issue we're facing at the moment is, um, for example, if I go ahead and I package this and we let it build, I'll show you what's going wrong. We're built. And if I grab it and I duplicate it, and now I run one, it checks, our logic checks, do we have a save game? We don't yet, so it automatically opens up the options menu and forces us, we need to have a player name. So we say Cisco. So that's set up. Let me launch the second one. I need to put a command line thing in here so that they're they're windowed. I keep forgetting to do that. So the second one, same thing, it checks because these are now two separate folders and each one, if we go to the engines, has a saved. So now they're doing separate checks. So this is DAX. So if we go back to here and we host our D Peak Space 9 game, and two players. Cisco loads in properly. Deep Space Nine game. We go over here. We search. And open it up. Find it and join. For some reason, when we load in the server, and if we look, it's the same on both. Um, the name is not being loaded and saved properly only on the connecting client server side it's fine host side it's okay so that's where we're trying to figure out why colors still work 
between them. So we're good there. And we can see um, Game Master permissions. Oddly, Cisco... Oh, because it made a new one. So it's still loading the old one on the client side. It's still just loading defaults. Interesting. So our clients loading in are defaulted. And if we start, we've got Cisco here is not the game master. Dax is, it's not loading our save game properly that we created at the main menu. We can move around our cubes. We've got controls. We also added in, pretty cool, check this out. We can uh, make a little thing and we can add them back in. So if we go over to Cisco, we don't have permission to do any of that. But if I go to the Game Master and I load in a token and I say, whoop, lock you over there. This Cisco now has control over it. And we can move it around. So that's where we're at. But for some reason, uh, we need to solve why um, the host is not loading the client information. Well, thank you, Z-Positive. We are making good progress. This will be uh, basically usable and testable in a, in a rough way for my, uh, my Dungeons & Dragons group at some point here so that I can do some real-world uh, internet testing. Though I don't know if I have the online, um, the online setup. I might have to make a, a rough direct IP connect um, uh, setup to begin testing over over network. Um, who is we? Oh, it's the royal we. <laughs> To quote the big Lebowski. We on this stream. Okay, so this is where we're loading player info. Nope, just me. This is solo. I am coding this. When I refer to we, I just mean we together as a stream have this. <laughs> so. Thank you. At some point here, I might um, do some of the Blender modeling on the, on the stream as well. I've been teaching myself Blender so that I can start... Um, Pulling in some custom, custom objects for us to uh, to model and load in. That's where that um, that's where the wall. This wall is my my first test uh, Blender to Unreal object that I that I created. so that we can work on learning how to do that too. I have an idea also I was thinking about because um, I want to be able to add in uh, additional Z levels so that you can create uh, dungeons and, and kind of um, mansions that are multiple levels to, to battle through. Um, so I think See, we have this BP board, and the board dynamically spawns um, this level. I th think I will s I will learn and set a standard for wall height um, so that we can drag in, we can spawn another board, have the initial initial platform, and then set its Z level to from like 0, 1, 2, or even negative, 
and then have a drop down where we can say how big to spawn. So then you can make um, multiple levels dynamically and then drag in a uh, uh, staircases and stuff and then and move between move between. So then you can have a 3D uh, dungeon. So um, it actually isn't. So check it out. What we're doing with uh, the game board is is pretty basic. To build the grid is this. One one grid is base is just spawning a tiles a twenty five by twenty five of them, with a little bit of a gap in between a five a five uh, centimeter gap. Um, so essentially, we'll just drag out another board, make a context menu that offers these as variables, and then you click a button and it runs the the macro. So then you can just do this on the fly rather than um, on begin play. And this will uh, uh, this will eventually also be in the server in the lobby, um, so that before you start the game too, you can set what your um, your grid size is going to be. Okay, let's focus back onto this issue. This, I think, should run on the server. Yeah, this will, I guess this is technically, I don't know if this is procedural, but it'll be, um, it'll be dynamically controlled at least rather than static. So I don't know how we're going to be pushing Unreal's uh, potential of, um, of rendering live rather than having static uh, rendered objects. So we'll see how performance goes. <laughs> but um we keep it simple hopefully it'll it'll stay stable Ugh. okay so maybe if this runs on the server grabs it and then replicates that'll fix it cuz then When we go to do this, update server side player info. Player info is that it comes in, grabs our player state. Where are we calling this? calling it right here on set player permissions are we calling it anywhere else So let's not do that. Let's grab our connected players array again. Go straight in. Yeah, I think be because we hadn't replicated that event on loading player info, this was just happening um, locally, remotely. So 
this should have been replicated up, but let's see, uh, maybe replication has to go from server to client. I don't know. Let's package this again and just see if that one simple change fixes it. All right, build successful. Wait, how do we, while we're at it, let's figure out how we uh, UA4 um, package build windowed mode. There it is. Okay, so we do it in our, our level, go to main menu level, blueprints, open the level blueprint right here. We're going to console command. if specified, so I don't think that's required. R dot set res 900 by 500 W, is that? Is that correct? UE4 console command set resolution. Oh yeah. Okay, so the W right there, I'll specify windowed. If I wanted it full screen, I would do an F. So that should do it. So if we go back and pack, whoop. That's not what I want, I wanted that and that right now i don't know there we go Okay, build successful. Well, copy paste. Launch one. There we go. Windowed. Better. That's Cisco. And we'll launch the other one. Dax, Cisco hosts a game at DS9, so far so good, Dax is going to look for a game, we found it, we join, <clears throat> and we're still not in, oh, we're also Cisco. <laughs> How did that happen? That's interesting because we're DAX over here in the actual save file.
Okay. Interesting. So when we go into our update all connected player lobby widgets, we are getting all connected players. We're, get, we're clearing our player info. We're going through all of our connected players. We're casting to a BP lobby player controller and grabbing its player state. We cast it to BP player state. We are getting the player info from the player state and adding it to the connected player's info. We then come down and we do it again. We go through all of our connected players again and we get that and we pass it in to add to here. It's passed by reference. We clear the player list. We go through our loop and we're going to add a player to the player list which is in here. Player info comes in by reference. That should hold. That holds player name and stuff. So at what point Why did it put Cisco for both? And it, it did this properly, right? Or the, uh, the colors. That's what's interesting. It, did, it separated colors out, blue and red. But it somehow did the same name for both. Is there only one game instance? Aha. Uh -huh. I think we need to remove the loading from the game instance. I don't think we can lo save and load in the game instance. I think that needs to be in the player state. Because um, the game instance, I believe, might be grabbing zero, just the index. right here um, let's see load game from slot user index multiplayer
Let's see. If you're testing multiplayer on the same computer, both instances of the game will save the save games in the same folder. Yes, we know that. Overriding whatever the other instance did. I think, yes, um, so we can't have this in, I don't think we can have the loading going on with the game instance that might be our problem so let's um let's do this in the player state so rather than here what we'll do is basically this Alt save slot name and config Alt player save. So we're going to get rid of that, that. Uh, save game will promote to a variable. Yeah, you could do it in the player controller also. Um, there's, I'm, the way that I'm, yeah. I feel like the player state is the, you know, the state. And the player controller is like the brain functions of movement and, and input passage. So that's, in my mind, why I'm keeping them uh, grouped like this. References. This will fail to cast to BP saving. Um, we will, this is loading, so we'll get the player info out of it and then set. Okay, so now, why does it do that? So now this is only in the player instance. We're not gonna be doing it here. This is player state instead. Loading only the hosts. And we want a save as well. Also, wait a second. Wait a second. Right, I forgot about this. When we get a new player state, so when we're moving from levels, uh, there's copy properties previously, so the new player state, we get our old one and set it so that information moves from player state to player state. Okay, hold on. Before we do all that, where's our options menu? When we... When we hit accept, that's the accept button enabled.
Where's our accept button? Here it is. That's the issue. Okay. I think what's occurring, maybe, we're setting up No, no, no. No, because we're still saving it and it grabs Cisco. So I think the issue is still okay. So let's get the players. No, get game state. Yeah, we can do that. Get the game state cast to BP. Game state or wait, get player. Player state cast BP player state. Print WPP options menu on a click set button failed cast BP player state. We're going to save. Save player info here. This will also be a server. Wait. Might not be able to call since, let's see, the, the UI. Let's not worry about that at the moment. Run on owning client, reliable. This probably doesn't even need to be. Let's also do client unload. Save player info, does save game exist. Basically, what are we doing over here? Info comes in, it is a Player info struct, pass by reference. Um, if it's not valid, we're going to create a save game object of the save game. Then set our variable. We'll then save the player info. and save game to slot. Okay.
Yeah, that's still working. Whoa, bunch of people. Viewers have jumped up to five. When does that ever happen? At like one of the most unexciting moments as well. No, not right now. You want to say hi to people? Oh, hi. There's a kitty. All right, we got a successful build. Check it. Copy and paste. Yes. Say hello to Cookie. <laughs> That's a fluffy kitty. And a hungry one, too. Stop headbutting me. Okay, so there's one. All right. And here's the second one. Don't bang the keyboard. Let's just go over there. Dax over here. Post a game. Deep Space Nine. Find a game. Oh, uh, it's still not loading it. What about how does colors go? Colors are working. Why are we having a problem with loading of information here? We look at our player save. It saved it. Yeah, you got your claw stuck in my shirt. That's very strange. I did, but um, player names, the way it was set up was, uh, it was being, is, it, it was being set in the, um, uh, in the lobby. So now I'm trying to set it in the main menu um, when the game first loads so that it's pulled over. No. I got a cat yelling at me for food right now. You're being very loud. Stop. At least I know that this is working host side. Um... I don't know if it makes more sense to have that in the player state or not. It kind of makes sense to me to have the player state handling um, the save and the load. But why are we not getting it on our lobby widgets? Right here. What's going on? Yeah, it is their lunchtime. It is 12.30. It's my lunchtime as well. I think I'm going to take a break for a little bit eat lunch and think about why we are not getting this um, getting this information all right I'll be back in like 10 minutes
Okay, Cat is satisfied for now. We'll see how long that lasts. She has a tendency to not register real hunger, but rather the if human is in kitchen, Q truck horn. Okay. Let's see. Um, if we go. No, I just fed you. Stop. Go away. Um, let me find the join button. If I go to join, Join session. We're a newly connected player. Our player state's going to fire off on. when reconnecting. Maybe it's these, but disconnect those. Actually, no, because that's how we move our data from level to level. So, when we hit accept, we're saving it. You know what? We're never setting it. We're only saving it. So it's existing in the save file, but we're not, we never actually set it. So um, let's see if that fixes our issue now. We we'll go in and we package. Hold on, then one more thing I want to do actually is here in our defaults in the config. That's not the right config. Player state defaults config. Turn that off. Okay. Now let's test that. And here, build it. And that's a success. Copy, paste. Launch one. And launch two. Cisco DAX. No, <laughs> it didn't work. 
That's frustrating. What are we doing wrong? get rid of replication entirely on these events. I don't know. Problem is there's just like no way to actually test this without packaging. That's what Two. Let's just go over there. Box here. You know what? Dax host. See, that works. So the host can take it, is taking stuff over. Why is this? Why is this not getting? This is not grabbing. So we're client side, we're joining. Put this back, set, set our player info. Here, this should just be focused on the save game object. Um, just local right I don't think that needs to be replicated I do wonder if the issue's right here. 
So when we move from our main menu to our lobby, we're copy the player state. Even though it's the same player state, we're getting a new player state because we're lo we're loading. A player state's not persistent. So this is occurring where we're copying over. So the new player state, we're getting the new player state's player info, and we're setting it as our player info. So we can find out actually, let's, um, let's break this and do a print right here of our player name. So when we move into the lobby, we should see it, it print, right? All right, another cat right here. You missed lunch. Are you wanting lunch too now? Yeah, you came down at the wrong time. I'll give you lunch in a second. Okay, copy, paste. Oh, hi, do you want to say hello to people? No, you're not a lap cat? Okay. All right. Hi there. You already ate. You're not getting more, no. Oh. Hi. We host a game. I didn't see a printout, so maybe it's not printing out on the package builds here. Debug, not development, probably. Because these... Interesting. See, there should be a log here, right? This I don't think ever fired. You can t test it, right? I think um, we do a standalone just as a client. If I host a game just with myself. Okay, so, hmm. So why is this not, this isn't firing between 
Oh, hold on. Let's see. Settle down. No, we're using a, it's the same player state. Why is there no... Ooh, this is does not fire. When we move from main menu to the lobby. Unless it is. And it's blank. So that's why we didn't see it. Mm -mm. It didn't fire. Okay. So this doesn't this doesn't fire unless we're moving from lobby to that. However, right here We're opening a new level from main menu to lobby, so I don't know why that doesn't fire off. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so we know that's not working. But... I'm doing a load player info right here on the initial client setup. So somebody, this fires off when the client, when the new, when DAX, let's say our, our client two logs in, the new player comes in, we set the newly connected player, we add them to our, our array. We're waiting for our server info to be ready, which is right here when the game mode when the lobby game mode starts we initialize and we're grabbing the server name and the max players and then once we have those we mark our boolean yep we're ready so that um this can continue we now go into initial setup. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe we want to tell them to, to load here. I don't know. So we go to the initial setup. Now, this is where we're telling them to load. So the, the newly connected player controller loads is gets this called we wait for the player state to be available player states available we move forward we load player info player save it's valid we set a reference to it we get the player info and we set our player info Are we overwriting? Maybe we're overwriting. All right, so. There, there's no way to test this without building again. So we want to delete this stuff and build.
this could be this like the issue that I had earlier um, where at the very beginning of the stream I was having the issue of um, I could hide the uh, the the tiles in the map by right clicking and hit hide and it would pass the true but then the boolean would flip it would say true on, it would say false it's hidden on one side but then once the boolean got passed by reference to the server it reported true so somehow the boolean got changed moving from client ui level to the server even though the visibility of the static mesh was set to replicate and it was uh false so as soon as we directly got the visibility on the server side where it was false it started to work so i, I don't I don't quite know why that was working, why uh, why that wasn't working either. But this could be another situation where we're passing this structure, and it's actually just a blank structure by the time it gets to the um, DAX Cisco. See, we moved. Or wait, that's our call. That's our call. So no, we got. We got it here. Ah, I wonder if it's this. I don't know. Let's go back to this and see if our things fire <laughs> all right we're still having the same issue Cisco it didn't fire over here see that Dax never popped up so, if I load this, yeah, it should, see that? It knows we have a saved file. And it got it now. I am very confused. This is where this seems to be working. This potentially isn't. Shouldn't have to do that. We're just checking the validity of the contents of loading this. So right here, again, I'm going to break and check and print out the player name. Um, so let's just test it here. First, we should see if I go Cisco accept. Oh. Interesting. I don't know why that happened. Let 
maybe I've changed something. Hold on. Let me delete the um, the old save file. And do it again. All right, Cisco. We're good, Cisco. Cisco. And we can't load in because. <laughs> All right, let's package. Package complete with a success. Copy paste. Opening a one. Opening up two. It's a Cisco. And we've got DAX. Cisco DAX. Printed both. All right. Post DS9. Two players on LAN. Cisco. Find LAN. Dax, look at that. It read it. We're getting closer to the problem. We're getting closer. Why aren't you getting it when you're creating, when you're populating the player list? Why aren't you getting it when we start the game? Cisco, it's lost it once again. Hey, Delta X. interesting for people who have joined I see we have five viewers um, even though th the we're experiencing some networking code issues yeah fix the problem I will I will try well, let me just show off what's going on so we're building a tabletop simulator can I like yep I can enlarge these so it's a networked um, tabletop simulator We've got the ability to also remove and add back our little uh, our tiles that are dynamically created. Um, our client over here does not have Game Master permissions, so can't move anything. We can construct and lock in place our tokens. Whoop! There's still a little, you know, it's not perfect. We have to do some polishing, you know, <laughs> but uh, we can give control so that we can move other other stuff. Boom. We will be able to include traps at some point. So that's what we're building is uh, a supplement for Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop games over the internet so what is going on why why are we loading and reading i don't need the state I need the mode So we're loading just fine right here. But then when we go here and we set up UI, create the lobby,
this right here is where we create I add connected player to player list and we pass in this player info I don't think this needs to be so the game mode is just it just exists on the server so these things I feel like they don't need to be replicated but maybe they do no they don't because we know that we we do this right here this isn't replicated and our colors are still working we're still passing in the booleans that stay proper and the booleans array is is totally fine so I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip um, straight to player state here. So what we're gonna do is go, let's put this in the middle here, continue, get players, get the player array. So rather than that, we're gonna do for each loop here disconnect that, disconnect that. Move that out for now. So this is already a player state. We're just jumping straight here. Getting the player info out of the player state which should be loaded before we run this. However, we can run load player info just to be damn sure that it is loaded. I don't want to have to do a delay, but you know what? We'll wait an entire second, a whole second inside of a loop. You don't want to do that. But we're going to wait. And see if we can get our, um, our save file. Why is it not carrying over? Why is the client side, uh, it's not, it's not uh, going up to the server and being passed around. Only the host is. There's our Cisco. Let's open the second one. Got DAX saved. Cisco, Cisco. Did it twice, even. Ooh, it didn't make it. Interesting. Interesting. We don't have a player list. See how it loads it every time it's doing, it's going through the creation. Something is hiccuping DAX. So we're good. This is right. It's trying. So something is stopping the creation of our connected player, of our connected player window. So we've got a problem here. Why are we have, it's, 
it's going to complete this loop no matter what. If we were to if we were to get stuck right here, this is not it's not adding adding anything. Intr okay. I think I know, I'm starting to piece things together here. By inserting this load player info right here. Which did fire. We know it did because it printed out, so it came out of it. This is not getting populated. Um, how about we do that down here? You know what? I want to know what the length of this is before we go into it. So let's do it actually. Let's do it outside the loop so we only get it printing once. So we're going to go right here and then here. I'm going to get this and we're going to check the length. Print. Print me the length. We're going to package again, because that's the only way that we can test our networking. We are successful. Copy paste. Launch one, launch two. Cisco, DAX, host, I see a zero. You see that? Zero, fine game. DAX, zero again, zero, Cisco, Cisco, why is it Cisco, Cisco, you see that? Interesting. Okay, so not only do we have a problem that this is reporting nothing in it, somehow we're not adding Maybe add unique is the wrong thing, but I don't, I don't know. Switch to an ad. Um, so we're reporting a zero here, but we are also... Printing twice, Cisco, Cisco. Load player info, load game from slot. This... Is it once again a user index issue? I don't think it should be. We should be doing this on our... This should be going just client side. Open in another program, or did we not close everything? Oh, we didn't.
Um, honestly, I'm I'm not sure, but even I mean, we could put this back on the game instance. It was having the same problem in the game instance. Player states exist on. Um, Uh, if we open up the compendium. And we go back up to our... See, our player state exists client and server. So they're... I don't know if there's one or if there's two. The player state, I mean, it's replicated to everyone. I'm not I'm not sure. But for some reason this player state it should be going through the whole the, the player array. And for each should be doing a load on the player state. Let's just try that. I don't quite know why, but it's loading the host's save game twice. So that's why on the host only, we saw Cisco print twice. We may need to create a... Um, we may need to make a client call in the player controller which then, so that it gets routed properly. For some reason, for reasons that I'm not aware of, maybe this is limitations of how um, client call, uh, how it works. Whoops, I'm running the wrong game. Cisco Dax. Yeah. 
Cisco zero again. See that? That's still the problem. It still thinks that there's zero in our connected player info. Dax, Dax. No, nope. that worked. Cisco Dax. So, hey, I think we may have fixed one thing so far. Cisco Dax. So now we, we okay, all right. So we've um, we forced the loading to the correct side now. Uh, we're just not populating our um, we're not populating our uh, connected player info list. So I'm gonna say this should be on the client too. Not the server. Okay, I feel like we've solved one thing so far. So we know that's that's not an issue. Why are we not adding to our connected player info array? First of all, we don't need to replicate this stuff on the server. Game mode is server only. All right, let's let's run what we've done so far. Build complete. There's one. There's two. Saved. Load Cisco up. Oh. I may have solved it. We may have broken it by putting replication on a server variable that shouldn't have been replicated. Damn it. <laughs> we're back to where we were. <laughs> we're reporting a two and we're reporting a Cisco. We're reporting a DAX. We're blue over here. Our color over here, Cisco, is not changing colors, though. However, our booleans are getting updated properly. So we can't we can't choose red, but for some reason, the red is not is not getting set. That is just baffling. Okay. So we got a one and a Cisco. Dax, look, we're report, we're we're re reading it, and we're set in color. What is going on? So we're finally populating this array and it's reporting a length. Then we come, so we come down to here. You know what? 
gonna... player color is probably not being saved right so let's investigate that so when we stop that um when we are in the lobby and we do the color select We're getting our player state. We're setting the player color in it. This is something, you know what? This is something I've actually, is really annoying. When you set members in it, you're not, even though it's a reference in, this doesn't make much sense to me, but you have to do that. Some, so that might be an issue. Even though you'd think when a reference is coming in and you're modifying members in that reference and the reference goes back out with the modified members, you would think that you're making changes to the reference, but you're not. I've, I've had to do that several times, so let's see if that's... Um, if that's an issue that I have set members, but I've forgotten to um, to manually set the variable back. One. Yes. Yes, it is. Replication is indeed a bitch. That's why I'm trying to do this stuff early on. It would be way more painful, I think, to build something and then have to go back and, and modify it for, um, for networking afterwards. I just want to do this from the start. So one and Cisco. Nope. Okay, so our color select is still not working. And that's still not loading. Okay. Yeah, this is the first time I'm really doing um, networking code. I've, I've worked single player only with a previous project. So I'm learning all of this as I go. Okay. Once again, I'm just curious if we do this right here in the viewport, what happens if I do a solo? We've broken the color something here also. Interesting. Probably because this only runs on the owning client.
I'm going to move this back out of player state and into the game instance. Something feels off. So here's our here's our load. And here's our save. They still exist. Okay. So Let's not do that there. We're going to go back to our Here we are. Our initial client setup is right here. What we're going to do is get the game instance. Pass the BP game instance. And we will load player info where were we here we are we're going to load player info set player info Okay. So there's our loading. We, if we are able to load info, we set it. And now for saving. Let's go to our main menu. options menu right here we're going to instead game instance cast the BP game instance save Okay, um, and like we were doing here, I would like to print again. So when we load, I want to do it right here. Yeah, some coding background helps with some of the concepts. But I've only been doing this for about a year, so if you stick with it, things things click and start to make sense. Uh, all right, and then when we save, I want to do it here as well. Okay, package. So 
successful. Copy and paste. Launch one. Launch two. Looks like success in saving so far. We host Cisco and one. We've hosted correctly. Hey, colors are working again. It may be that I broke it by putting it in player state and game instance is the right place to put it. No. Colors working, we are still not loading the name. However we are, um, it loaded there when we first joined. So if we join again, let's refresh this. Watch. Dax, it is reading the save file correctly. Why is it not getting it? Why? So I'm going to leave that in the game instance like I have done always in the past. I'm going to spit this here too, just in case this ever fires. This should only ever fire when we are reconnecting if we if we were disconnected so i don't think we, this should ever be firing um Hmm. Right here, let's do another print. This time I'm going to format it so we can see something a little bit more. I'm going to break here. This is going to be in, um, what are we doing? Adding player, sorry. Adding player to list name. Okay. This will fire off and we'll see exactly what names we're trying to add to populate this player list because for some reason it's empty. And we are passing by reference. So, no, we can't test here. There's one. And 
There's two. Cisco. Dax. Cisco, one adding Cisco. Yep, blank. So we found the error. The name is coming in blank, even though it's passing everything else. Oh, we're getting closer and closer to this damn error. It's just taking, it's just bizarre. I don't get what is happening here. So right here, this info array coming in, right here, when we are going through our game state player array, this player info getting added here does not have the client's name but it has the client's color We are assigning the selected color on the server via the lobby player controller. It comes in, we're checking availability. This is a server side call. We're getting the player state server side and setting the player info, the color on the server side before calling this Maybe when we set the name, we need to move some of this into a server side call on setting the name, I'm thinking, because maybe this only exists client side. Maybe we are stuck client side, so that's why we're not getting our name. This is so annoying. <laughs> Okay, so there's our color. We're going to make a custom event of um, set player name server. Runs on server and it's reliable. It's going to accept a name, which will be a text passed by reference. We just need this again we need to get the player info from the player state we need to set members we are setting the name yeah you're falling off my lap yeah Oof, you smell bad you got some breath there It BP lobby player controller. This is on set player name server failed to cast to BP player state. Uh, we are also going to set the player info just because. I don't know if it works. Just to be safe. And then we will call this.
um, receive a new text from the options menu preset with the player name and the player states player info struct. Then update. Oh, we're doing it here. That's funny. Well, I guess we don't need to do that. Uh, we're probably being redundant by even sending it again over here and setting and doing that. That's kind of, that's funny. This executes on server. We're already doing that. We really just need to be calling that, right? We might shrink this down. I don't know. Okay. Um, so we've made this. We now need to call it. So we aren't going to be doing this. Nope, we're not doing that. Not doing that. We aren't doing that or that. We're going to get owning player, cast the BP uh, lobby player controller. Right? Oh, what player controller do we have right now? We have a menu player controller. Wait a second. We're in the menu. Let's use the lobby player controller in the menu. We are not doing anything with this menu player controller at all. There's no difference, so we don't need it. Lobby player controller. This player controller is going to lose information and switch when it moves from lobby to menu, so it doesn't but it doesn't matter at the moment. We're going to set player name. There it is. Set the player name and then we're going to save the info. Guess we are going to do that. Doop. So that we can do that. We have to make a struct to save. Okay, so now we're going over to here and we're doing this. 
So let's package and see how that works. Iterate. All right, you're slipping. Get on my lap. Here we go. Package complete. Copy paste. Cisco. Oh, we already got a failure. Hold on. Yeah, let's go to our levels. Our main menu level. Hmm. Very interesting. Why did you fail to cast? This might be the issue or an issue. We don't have an owning player, perhaps. Get player controller. We're local still, so we can still do this. We're not on a server side yet. That might have been the problem that we were having. We were doing a get owning player and it was returning a null pointer. Okay, successful build, copy paste. It did it again. Update server side. Hold on. That wasn't the issue right here then. Check the log. Here we go. Update server side player info failed to cast to BP lobby game mode base. Okay, that's because we are in the menu. We don't the menu game mode. So right here. Yeah, this is the, we don't need to have a lobby to update, so we shouldn't be. Okay. So we do have an issue. This, okay, 
let's go back to having the separation. We want to have our menu player controller. And in our menu player controller, we will move this to here. Get rid of that. And this update server side player info. This right here. We're going to do right here. We don't need to do that. We will then, um, we don't need to call this big honking thing. We just do this. And call an update. This is on our assign selected co color. server and okay we're doing it here as well on set player permissions I see. Okay. That's why we did that. So we'll still keep calling that. To reduce duplicate code. All right. Um so we do that, but over here all we're doing is receiving receiving the text from the options menu to set as the player name, putting it into the player state, and then um, and setting it. So that now is basically all the menu player controller does. So we want to um, get owner. I think we can do this. Yep. Um, pass to BP menu player controller we are in the menu not the lobby uh, and we will set player name and then we will proceed all right Let's make sure things are clean. All right. See what happens. Let's roll the dice. That's a 
success, copy paste, launch our first battle grids, and launch our second battle grids, Cisco DAX, post our Deep Space Nine game. Cisco adding one Cisco we're good find still good yep with the color join we are still nameless why are we nameless And it'll probably be the same. Oh, so we have a. Um, it doesn't destroy the session properly when we disconnect. So we'll look into that. What is going on here? I'm wondering let's get this out of an interface and put we just make a function instead I mean that's what these are right This connected play. So if we look at this connected player widget, color and ready are fine. Why is the player name vanishing? This won't work on here.
Um. Okay, as usual, we're good. Hmm. Let's see if it's actually loading the player info or if it's skipping straight to the setup lobby player widget. Hey, the good news is my new motherboard is almost here. I'll blame it on that. It's this it's this damn X370 chipset. That's what's going wrong right now. I just need that new X570 and everything will just be that much better. Okay, successfully loaded player info. Successfully loaded player info, supposedly. Well, that is just befuddling even more.
how on earth is it losing? Because we've we've checked here before. I do a print string right here before we add it to this array, which we're clearing. If I do a um, format, and this is in um, the uh, BP lobby game mode base. What are we doing here? We're updating. Updating widgets with name. You know what? We know where it's at. Name equals. If we run this, we've seen that it'll it'll print out DAX. So this is again like the issue I was having where somehow a Boolean that was false became true once it passed by reference to the server. The server is always right. These things are set to replicate. The ser never trust the client. Maybe it is seeing that and the server is saying, hey client, no, you're not named that. You're named this because in my data, because I am the only one that is the, the, the truth. The client is a liar. I'm thinking maybe the server, because these things replicate, the server is saying, no, you're not actually named Dax. You're named nothing. I think that's what's happening. And I think that was what was happening with my Boolean even though I was sending a false, it was checking its own data and saying, no, 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 that Boolean is true. You're wrong. Yep, see that? It said... Wait, hold on. Over here. It's calling it over only over here. So we know even more now that this... Yeah, because this is server-side, only the host is going to see what get this prints out. So only the host is getting this information. Okay. Let's proceed from there. We now know Okay. We know that when we do this Well, that's why we're trying to do it server side. So this is on the menu, set player name, and we do it on the menu over here, right? Once we load in over here, where is, let's see, 
when we log in, we wait for the server to be ready and do our initial setup here. We come in, we get our player state, we wait for our player state, we get it, we load, this is running on client, that's what's happening. We need to make a server call. Um, this needs to occur. Okay. Switch this to server. Package and try that. Oh. You can uh, you can track time by how much further you slip down into a chair. But there has to be some form of um, correction to your calculation based on how often do you reset posture. Okay, so that's, that, that initial setup is now running on the server, not the client. So if we go Cisco, DAX, when we host and we switch over into the lobby, we're still okay host side, moment of truth. Failed to cast. However, we've we've changed some things. Okay, we failed to cast. Let's um, let's take a look at the log real fast. Cause that went by too quickly. Here we are. Lobby menu, get ready, start. Okay. This is another, this right here is why I put in the loop to wait for the player state. So we messed up. Something is no longer uh, um, waiting for the player state again. And we are again, Cisco loading server side is the issue. So we're back to, we're back to, um, we need to load our save game client side, but then pass the information up to the server level player state. Let's take a look at this lobby menu. Why did we, this is why I have this here. So let's um, let's stay client here. And we load. Now we need a um, we need the same thing that we had on our menu. We need this. I'm back over here. Set the player name server side. So rather than that, set player name server. Let's 
Let's move. Come on. Okay. So that should pass the name up. to the server. There's a success. Paste. First one. Whoop. Second one. Cisco Dax. Post. Successfully loaded. Join. Hey, we solved it. We just weren't passing the name up to the server. It was that the server was saying, no, to hell with what you think, client. You don't have a name because we never passed it all the way up to the server, apparently. So we've got it. Cool, we can now, yeah, see it's all properly server and client is, is getting there. So if we make Dax the game master and we start, everything transferred properly, we're good. Dax is the game master, can spawn things. We don't have the permission. Dax can give Cisco control and now we do have permission. Look at that. Reset rotation, we can delete, remove. Lock. Lock. Put stuff up on top. Awesome. Well, hell yeah, we've uh, we've managed to solve that little issue. We okay. All right. Well, that's cool. We've solved that. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. Um, player names are now prompted at game start if a save file is not found. And yep. And uh, server and client properly load save the data in the lobby. And push. Woo!
All right. So now if we go to our main menu and we just take a look at what we've got, what can we work on next? I got a couple ideas. So we load in our little single player. We're in where the game master and we start. We can't load to a new, we have to do a standalone. So, I've got a couple ideas. I was thinking maybe we can work on um, the, uh, the next Z level of uh, grid so that we can drag in, let's say, you know, a new tile and set it to the next Z level and create a new floor. That would require us knowing our um, our wall height. Um, not necessarily, because we stack, right? Actually. So we just need to be able to stack and then set the Z and then s dynamically spawn, uh, run the macro to spawn uh, more of these, right? So let's do that. Let's work on that. Let's go to our gameplay. One second, new, what are we working on now? We're working on extra Z level board spawn. Okay, so where's our board? Here's our board. This is what we're doing to build our grid. It's just a simple execute this 2D grid macro. Let's, um, we already have a context menu for our tile. Our board maybe needs to have Our board has no, it, it isn't anything. So if we go to our level, our board is right. That's not even it. It's in there. We, we don't even have anything. So it just, it populates and it spawns. So we need a board spawner that we can click and drag out. So this board, we maybe uh, the tile. Or, okay, so this is our parent, right? This is our board. We're not doing anything here yet. Why don't we pass in, actually just delete those and drag. We'll pass in the size that we're going for. On begin play, there's our 25 by 25, but we can call this And the location right now is just zero, 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 right? So that's off of our initial one. So we actually even want that in there. 
So there's our center location too. So when we are going to spawn and build this, um, this is our initial spawn, right? Initial board spawn. But now we also want to be able to spawn a dynamic grid board for a new floor, um, which is going to require a different Z level. So we just want to be able to execute this off of a newly dragged in board. So the board has no static mesh. We're not going to be able to see it if we drag it in. We could give it a sprite. That way that there is kind of an image or, well, we're going to need, um, we're going to need a collision cube or a, a, a volume in order to be able to right click on it to bring up the context menu that we want. So, um, how do we want to go about this? Give it a Let's give it a static mesh. It has no collision. Actually, custom. We want um, query only. So we block camera and visibility, but um, We don't have, actually, I think that's fine. We're just query only. There's no physics collision on our, on here. So in our static mesh, let's just give it a um, sphere for now. Or actually, um, Let's give it the cube and we're going to make it um, our wood. We're going with oak, right? Uh, and it's going to basically be the same thing as our tile. But when we spawn it, we'll turn off the original. So there's our tile, just like our actual tile. But this is the um, default spawn mesh. I don't know. Board origin. Um. And what we want is when this executes, we set the visibility of this. Actually, I just
got a better idea. So we want to be able to um, potentially modify this grid after we've made it. Um, Give me a metal gold. It's gonna be small, like a point two. Let's go with point four. Um, So if we just play in the selected viewport right here. Yeah, there's our there's our origin. So what if File knows it's bored. So in our um, code here, let's go to our tile. We want a U property visible any. Um, Edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write, meta equals um, expose on spawn equals true, I think. And then category is. Uh, I need to look that up. Hold on. You can have a, you can have a, uh, yeah, you can have variables that are exposed on spawn. UE4 meta exposed on spawn. There it is. I just did this wrong. Meta. And don't need that. Oh, I wasn't wrong. Meta equals. There it is. Now it's happy. Okay. Um, we want a um, class BG board pointer. Um, board reference. A BG board. Uh, we're going to save and close. Back up. So what I'm thinking here is uh, every tile is going to know it's bored. And so we can right click on any tile and then change the properties of the board. So then we don't need to worry about having a um, having an origin uh, that we need to find. So there we go. There's our board reference, and we're good.
So now every tile has its board reference. Okay. So if we play in the viewport here, that's not what I want. I want to just jump into the default. Just do a standalone. There we go. Uh, each of these tiles should now have, yep, there it is, BP board. Okay, so um, we do want this if we have no tiles. So I'm thinking um, the board possibly should have an array. So We'll think about that later. Um, so this set visibility, when we build the grid, we'll make it disappear. And it's gone, cool. Might be able to still hit it if we find the center. Where's our damn center? Whatever. Okay. Um, so now this tile context menu, how about we add the board button. what there we go that's nice so we get our board and go to UI gameplay um, just like we had to make a new menu Actually, what we did was on our token context, we just have a widget switcher so that we can switch to the, our context. Similarly, with our tile, let's wrap this vertical box with a widget switcher. This will be our tile context widget switcher. This is for the main tile context menu, uh, vertical box. And we want to add another vertical box. This is the second one. So this will be our board context vertical box. Um, so with the board, We've, we're spawning, these things exist. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go to our board. This up here. We haven't done anything in our board. We just made it so that we could, oops, so that we could just do stuff here. Um, C plus plus. We don't need to tick. So. Toss that there. 
Um, I want a U property. Edit anywhere. Blueprint, read, write, category, BG, board, config. And this is going to be a T array of class ABG file pointers called um, board tiles. And if I remember correctly, This macro does not spawn, I had this issue in another game, this macro does not spawn them as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It spawns them in a spiral going outwards or in a pattern um, from the center. So all of these are going to be completely jumbled up in this array. So what we're going to need to do is um, let's go ahead and save everything and close because we're going to do some stuff in the C++ now. A tile needs to have coordinates. So let's open up our types. We have player info and we have a token bank. Let's go ahead and make another struct. U struct blueprint type struct F. This is BG tile info. Generate body and we have a U property. Edit anywhere. Blueprint read write. This is going to be let's have it them all separate. So we're gonna have an int x I've been drinking. I've had like several of these. Who are you, Delta X? I appreciate that. Let me grab a, uh, let me grab another. I drink water, by the way, that's what this is. It's just straight up water. Thanks for watching out for me. A UE4 interested person. Well, I appreciate you being here and watching out for me, Delta X. I quit drinking a few months ago. I'm a little over three months sober, so bubbly has been there for me. And it keeps me much better hydrated than beer ever did. So our tiles are going to have a z-axis so that we know which board, which level they're on. Even though... We'll leave it for now. Even though they, they know their board, so this actually may not be necessary, but an X and a Y... <laughs> I do use writer. The um, the Intella Intella stuff with uh, on, uh, in Visual Studio. Being able to fuzzy search for functions just wasn't very very quick at all. Um, writer for Unreal is a godsend. It is it is fantastic. 
Um, also, you get this kind of stuff, which is pretty cool. Okay, so our tile now needs to have our tile info X, Y, and Z. So we're going to grab our tile here. Let's move and organize this. Just throw it over here. Our tile is going to have a U property edit anywhere. Blueprint read write. Um, this also needs to be exposed on spawn. Category in the config. And this is of our FBG um, tile info. And this is our tile info. So when we make a tile, we give it its coordinates. And because, so what I'm envisioning is, let's say you make a, um, let's say you make a new floor to your dungeon, and you realize, wait, I don't want a ten by ten floor. I actually need it to be an eight by eight. What are you gonna do? You don't want to go through and have to right click and delete and shrink it. Um, I'm thinking what we need is to be able to um, get the tile array find the and, and shrink columns and rows and so we have because they're spawned actors we need to destroy call destroy actor on um each of in in it so that we're effectively shrinking our uh, our array from the outside towards the spawn center so we're going to need to be we need to sort our array um do we need to sort it It might be faster if it's been sorted. I'm not entirely sure. We might just make this simple for now and just say delete anything within this uh, column and this row. And just do a for loop on tiles info. So on board, let's make a Make a, um, a function. I want to make this exposed uh, blueprint callable. Um, category BG board. Functions, not very original, but whatever. This is going to, this actually might need to be called on the server also since we're destroying stuff. But this is going to, which we do, I think spawn board runs on server. So we'll do that here. which means this array probably also needs to be replicated, which also means we now need our um, get lifetime replicated props. This is true. Uh, Super get lifetime and do rep lifetime. There it is. That's why I like writer. It grabs a macro that easily. A B G. Whoops. Board and uh, our tiles. Our board tiles. There we go. Okay, so that'll be replicating. I don't know if that was. Totally necessary, but we need to call um, shrink board, and we want um, 
an integer, the total x and uh, y coming in, right? So if the x and the y coming in We um, we want our board, let's say, okay, we have a 10 by 10 board already. Um, we're gonna start counting by zero for our columns and our rows. So we're gonna want to, for a uh, tile in board tiles um, so this the x and the y coming in we want I want to say that this is going to be the new size so let's say this is 8 by 8 and we have a 10 by 10 we want to get rid of the difference. So, um, we want to do a, um, our board needs to know these things. So let's give it some more properties. Um, this is going to be also replicated. Edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write, category equals board config. This is an integer or Could just be a 2D vector, right? Yeah. Board size. So we're going to go with um, if tile dot x tile dot wait, we just need the C++. This is just uh, fbg tile info get tile const return info if tile get tile info dot x is equal to board size dot x minus x no Hold on. It's greater. So we're starting at zero. I have a 10 by 10, that's zero through nine. And we want to shrink it to eight by eight, that's zero through seven. So yes, greater. If it's greater than board size dot x minus x. I'll destroy and our board tiles will that auto resize is it smart enough to know that we got rid of a reference inside it I'm gonna think it is since it is a, a T array I think Unreal Garbage Collection will handle that. 
So that'll work with that. If file get file, we're just gonna test this. You know, it might this might be totally wrong that or you know close enough, and we just need to work fix it a little. So if tile, well, we just destroyed it. So. Um, We need to um, actually do this up here. For tile, get tile info dot y is greater than board size dot y minus y. Okay. I don't see any major problems yet in my mind. Let's find out what happens. So, if we go find our board, yep, we've got a tile info that we're needing, so we will make one. The X row comes in here, and the Y row comes in here, Z we'll leave alone for the moment. All right, that looks good to me. A board also has the size right there, so we're going to set board size. These are floats, but they're never going to be anything but ints, so Whenever we use them, it should be okay. We could probably just round or truncate um, just to be certain, but they should never be set to anything except whole numbers. So now we've got that. Our tile info on our tile. Let's just make sure things still still run correctly looks like it does if we go check a tile hey would you look at that it does spawn them in order well that's just cool all right, I don't know why they weren't in that other game of mine. So, and then if we look at the board, oh, we forgot to add to, add to our array. So our board size is saved. Man, things are just working. That makes me happy. We're going to add to our board tiles. Get board tiles. We're gonna add unique. Okay, so now when we do this again, we've got 625 array elements. Holy God, that's, that's correct, right? Yep, okay. Just making sure, there are 625 tiles here, roughly. No, exactly. Um, let 
let's um let's do this now let's go to our ui our gameplay our tile context menu um we make this when we right click Yes, and uh, we have a tile reference right here. So when we click the board button, the tile has a reference to the board. So when we click the board button, doop, uh, we're first we're gonna do we're gonna make sure that we have a valid tile. We're going to get the board reference. And I think in here, we will have a, um, I don't know, let's test a shrink. shrink button and let's test a grow button and these will just increase by one row and column each or decrease when you push them okay So we want to make sure that both of these are all valid before. And then if they are, we set active widget index to one to show those buttons. Check our references and switch to the board context buttons. And a grow button. Actually, we'll do a shrink button first. When we click the shrink button, we get the board reference, we get the size, we split, and we're going to decrement decrement Actually, hold on and get board size interesting I think that just applies it right and then we're going to set the board size This is running all on client side, so I don't think this is actually good. Well, we're going to have to call these. We need to call, actually. So hold on. Which we have. Shrink board. The issue is that uh, we actually, in the code, need to set. We need to set that. So let's try it and then we'll add the, the grow, which will be identical. But a plus one. Let's see how badly this blows up. We need to set our config for the player state. Give us back our game master permissions so we can do this. Oh my. 
Well, we know it works. Oh, geez. All right. So, what happened? Shouldn't it? So it was a 25 by 25, right? So... That actually needs to happen, I believe. It needs to be off by one. Since it's going to be 0 through 24. Save, close, compile this again. Load it. Go to our default level, play. Interesting. So what are we doing? We're getting our tile, we're getting the board. We're calling shrink board. We're getting our board size. We're adding one. Maybe our board size is, is bad. Let's uh let's print what's our board size? Actually, before we even call that, let's just print the board sizes. No, we're good. We're getting a 25 by 25. Okay, so now what happens when we when we hit shrink? 24 by 24. Okay, so that's doing what we think it's doing. So, we're sending in the numbers that we wanted into our into our board resize function, which shouldn't be called board shrink or shrink board. It should be called resize board. Um, and so they're coming in and we're going through all of our board tiles and we're checking the X value. And if it is greater, wait, okay, so like 25 from 25 come in. 25 minus 1. Right. Duh. 
We just want to see if we're outside of, um, So I think minus one and minus one. We just are trying to see if we're above or outside that. Okay, that's silly of me. I think I got it. Let's uh, compile. And open. Go to our game map, hit play, shrink. Oops. Grow. Is it doing anything? Well, it's not doing anything now, so. What have we done? Or what have we not done? This probably needs to be, oh, I know. Okay, so from the board, we can't call destroy tile here. Um, this might work if we So we need to, um, well, it was working. So we, we, we don't need, it's not a server client thing. It was working. So if 25 and 25, so we're re -shrink, we're shrinking it down to 24 and 24 come in. Oh, right. Nothing is bigger. Okay, so, um, other way around. This minus one. This minus one. And then we need to set, um, once it's done, board size dot x is equal to x, board size dot y is equal to y. Save and close. File. And load back up. Ooh, my motherboard just arrived. I don't want that sitting on the front doorstep. Huh? All right. Hooray. Be getting the 
An X570 chipset on soon. All right, let's test this now. So if we zoom way out and we hit board shrink, look at that. Our grow is broken, but our shrink works. Oh, cause grow is still, grow is still calling destroys, duh. But our shrink works. So um, yeah, shrink, tile destroy. We need now a grow board. Um, we could have it all in one, a whole a whole resize, yeah. No, nah, let's let's have them let's have them separated. One function, a function should do one thing. So we'll close. So we now need a U function server reliable. We might not be able to do this here. Because the macro, let's see. Growing the board is going to be more difficult. Okay, let's not do that here. Let's look, go back to our... Um, a mixture of C++ and blueprints is, uh, is a healthy thing to aim for. Um, I used to do all blueprints, but um, for professional Unreal game design, um, ideally you want to have major uh, logic established in C++ to parent off of, and then your blueprints should be um, game... Um, game moment specifics. So all of my um, all of my my blueprints here are based off of you can see um, based off of a C++ parent because some things are going to be quicker in C++ such as math. So if you're doing mathematics um, or anything more complex than that it's going to be a little bit quicker. Blueprints are pretty efficient as they are, but from what I can tell and what I've read, um, having having things higher up in the C++ once you've established a, uh, a function that you're going to need and you're going to call a lot on the parent and that the children will inherit, it's good to have that stuff moved up higher. Um, I think uh, as, your, as your game grows, you want things in C++. Okay, so this is how we build the grid initially. Um, let's go ahead and fix real fast this. We can't just grow by shrinking the board. <laughs> um, what we're going to need to do, if we look in this grid execution macro, there's our an offset, so multiply by 0.5, we're getting our sector size in. So, Uh, 
poly center. Because we need to say we need another row we need another yeah we need another X row or another Y row so and if we look go to that level and we take a look at how they spawn It looks like it goes down the X first. So it's spawning, um, columns. It spawns by row. X's go up quicker. Okay. So Wait, I have an idea. What if Okay, I've got an idea. What if we um what if we have a maximum board size? Let's see how bad this runs. Hey, that doesn't run too bad at all. We got kind of a funny, uh, I don't know, macro texture thing occurring. I don't quite know what that is. That's interesting. Anyway, um, okay, so that doesn't totally destroy the game having a big board like that, but um, we're still gonna go 25 by 25. This is gonna go 100 by 100, however. And then, um, we're going to go uh, get, get the static, hold on, um, Toggle tile visibility is on our tiles. So we're going to toggle tile visibility. We're going to hide it if it's outside of our, of our, our board size. So if, um,
So if x is greater than um, this minus 1, or y is greater than our y minus 1, We'll hide it, not just keep going. So that'll create the illusion that we have a 25 by 25 board. That didn't work, hold on. Uh, less than, wait, no. If our x why is this making all of them invisible? Why can't I read that? Well, there we go. It worked. Okay. I was just turned in the wrong direction is what was. So we'll have to work on that. Um, okay, so there's our, there's our board. So here, what we want to do well. Hmm. That doesn't feel no. Let me get rid of that. I think I do want to go the hard route and try and spawn new tiles. So I think what we're going to want to do is, um,
we have to get the How is it knowing the size of these grids? I don't think it is. We're just going with 105. So the sector size is 105. So because of, so 100 centimeters, one meter. So with a standard cube, our tiles, are one by one, they're just flattened just by 2.25. So it's just added an extra five centimeters or unreal units onto each side. So we know that from center to the edge here is 50, 55 plus another 50. So 105. So the, the di we just need to get the center So for auto tile board tiles, um, if if the tile that we're getting its x is um, equal to x minus two, yeah. Because we want the if we if we have a 24 by 24 board that's 0 to through 23 we're off by one already and we're trying to grow our 24 by 24 to 25 by 25 we're trying to get the row right before our 25 so one one less than what we're putting in but then subtract another one because of our off by one um, we're going to get that tile. We're going to How do we know which direction we're going? We're going to be either on the edge Actually, what we want to do is if our x is equal to board size dot x, so first we'll start with the x's. We're going to um, We can't do this here because we have to spawn the BP tile. Unless we store here um, U property anywhere blueprint read write category equals BG board config. We do a um, uh, T subclass of our ABG tile. Um, and this is our 
file to spawn reference. Uh, we will spawn actor. Can we? It's in probably gameplay statics. Spawn. There we go. Spawn object will be of um, file to spawn reference. And the outer this <laughs> do we have a spawn after That's what I want. Okay, world context object is this. I think will work. We want uh, our tile to spawn reference to spawn. And we need the transform. So F we need a new F transform spawn transform is equal to the tile dot get tile info dot x plus one oh five. Uh hold on. F transform comma uh, get tile or tile dot get actor transform dot x dot x plus 105 comma so f transform see a delta x Thanks for uh, being around. I'm 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 here um, every uh, Tuesday through Friday at 9:30 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time in Colorado. So I want and then spawn transform dot get locate get location dot x plus Did that work set look at there we go There we go. Uh, <clears throat> B 
begin deferred actor spawned from class. Begin deferred actor spawned from class. Okay. Hopefully, let's see if that works. Um, we're going to save all and close, then file. The, um, because when you compile C++, um, it can crash often, especially if you've done changes to a, um, to an object's uh, upper code that things inherit from. I don't think this is going to work because, well, there's our token, so we're going to spawn that. However, um, our C++ doesn't pass in this stuff. I bet this is going to crash when I try and when I try and do this. I didn't even call it. Hold on. Go to UI, UI here, tile context menu. Uh, hot reload is not is not the best. Um, sometimes you can recompile and it'll be fine, but oftentimes it will crash. Um, it's not totally re reliable. Roadboard. So there's our new function. It's going to try to spawn these tiles. Didn't work, probably because I don't think that works. So I'm going to try and write this in blueprints instead. So in our board, I'm going to custom event, row board, blueprint. This will run on server, reliable. This will receive our X and our Y. Uh, we will get our board tiles for each. We will get um, get the board get the tile info split if X is equal to board size split if x is equal to um, the board size minus one spawn actor from class bp file we want to get actor location Split that struct. We want to add 105 to the X, pass it in, tile info split. It will be um, plus one on the X. 
for now. Forward reference is self. And we'll add to the board tiles. That's not what we were doing. We were doing. That's why it wasn't working. It should have been and is less than X. And tile. That's what we should have been doing. The tile needs to be equal to the board size minus one, and it needs to be less than X. So board size minus one and It's less, it's less than X. Hey, look at that. I did it. What do you know? That wasn't too hard. So we can shrink and we can grow. We just aren't, um, we've got a none issue. All right, we are getting there where we can shrink and grow our board dynamically. So, um, I'm going to end there because I feel like this is going to, this is a, a good place to, um, <laughs> yep, you can, uh, you can feel good just like I feel good. That That's a big accomplishment like right there. So we have something to start on tomorrow um, to uh, put a comment to do, improve and enhance the dynamic growing of board rows and columns. So that's awesome. That's where we're going to pick up tomorrow is improving this and being able to grow and, and uh, our board dynamically. And then once we have that, we'll move on to dragging out another board so we can have multiple layers of dynamically uh, growing and uh, shrinking boards. So Thank you for uh, joining me today uh, on Deep End Dev. I'll be back tomorrow at 9.30, 9.40 a.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time. So thank you, everybody. Have a great evening.